In this morning's Health Watch, female hair loss going bald is not just a problem for men. 40% of those who suffer from hair loss are women. And Tabitha Coffey is one of them. She is the host. You might uh, recognize her of Tabitha's Salon Takeover on Bravo and author of It's Not Really About the Hair. She joins us along with dermatologist Dr. Doris Day, author of Forget the Facelift. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Tabitha, you first started to notice your hair loss when? I had spoken to clients about it, obviously, over the years of being a hairdresser, and I noticed it shortly after my mother passed away. And I really hadn't been taking care of myself. I'd been taking care of my mother and focused on her and honestly not even looking in a mirror. And I started to realise that there were clumps of hair and bald patches all the way through my hair and realized that something was obviously wrong. So when did you, you say it was really stress, you believe, that caused it for you. Oh, absolutely. So when, but when did you connect those two dots that it was the stress of dealing with, you know, taking care of your mother, losing your mother, all of these things? I have to tell you, as ridiculous as it sounds, because I have spoken to my clients about the, you know, health factors and that stress is a huge contributing factor to women mm -hmm. having hair loss. I didn't connect the dots for a while because I was so caught up in everything that was going on. It took me a little while to connect the dots. And then I realized what was going on, that it was stress. And I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't eating properly. I wasn't taking care of me. There was a lot of stress. And that's when I realized I needed to do something about it. Dr. Day, we know how difficult this is for not just men and women to talk about. How, talk a little more about how common this is in women. 50% of women by age 50 will have hair loss. There's 30 million women su suffering from this um, in this country now. Yes. 50 percent. That's a really so, so half of all women will yeah. experience hair loss. But yeah. how significant are we talking about things like, like Tabitha went through? Actual bald patches, big clumps falling out. It's great that Tabitha shares her story because it is such a common one. Stress is not so much for hair loss, but it increases hair shedding. But someone who's prone hmm. to a hormonal genetic pattern of hair loss, it can accelerate that. So not all the hair comes back. There's also autoimmune patterns where you can see patches of hair loss, and it's often the hairstylist who will point it out, and then they'll bring them to the dermatologist to make the diagnosis. Diagnosis. So it is important to see your dermatologist if you're having hair loss to try to look at the underlying patterns and often there's a lag. When you have a stress, the hair loss doesn't often start till three or four months later. Mm. So once it passes because that's how the hair cycle goes. So what do we do? There's so much that you can do. The one thing that women should know is that there is hope. Women's pattern of hair loss is different than men. So men get the receding hairline, they go bald. Women kind of just thin out around the crown region, mm -hmm. and it's a slow kind of painful process starting in their 20s. But there are natural supplements. There's something called Viviscal that is a natural homeopathic supplement that you can get either from your doctor or from a drugstore in different strengths. And I always like to give people choices. Mm -hmm. And then there's... We have before and after pictures, by the way, yes. up right now of Viviscal. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And is, does that mean, you mentioned too, the way women and where women lose their yes. hair, it's a little bit different than, say, male pattern baldness. Yes. Does that Absolutely. mean it can ultimately be more treatable for women? These things might work better? Well, there's there are actually more options for men because men can have Propecia and some other drugs that are not proven to work in women. So we have to look for more natural um, types of treatments and, and other supplements and things. Uh, Tabitha, what do you tell your clients? I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you deal with this on a, on a daily basis in the salon? First of all, to talk about it, I think there's so much stigma, especially with women, mm -hmm. because you expect men to lose their hair. You don't expect women to. And with women, as Dr. Day can attest to, you know, there are so many things with hormones and stress and not taking care of ourselves and going through all of these things. Pregnancy, mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. bad that one. really yeah. contribute to it. So for me, it's talking to them about it, talking to them and saying it's okay. And for me, I used natural supplements and they really worked and that's what I recommend to my clients. And you can also help them style their hair. I mean, it, it, that's an important thing too, to maybe style in a way that makes them oh, more comfortable. Sure. It's not as obvious and that can go a long way. And making them feel good about themselves. Really, really great to have both of you with us this Thank morning. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.